pues otro viernes más. Pero esta vez no hay Star Citizen Live, hay Calling All Devs, que en esta ocasión se llama eh, Hablando Nave. ¿Hablando Nave? ¿Hablando de naves? Hmm. Dentro asunto. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Calling All Devs, our question and answer series where we take questions from you, the Star Citizen community, and pose them directly to our developers. On this month's show, we are talking ship. We have collected a series of ship-related, ship feature-related questions, and we're going to pose them to our vehicle director, director of vehicles, Mr. John Crew. Bueno, pues han recogido una serie de preguntas que ya sabéis que en Espectrum suelen hacer relacionadas con características de naves, que se las van a preguntar a eh, el director de vehículos, Juan Tripulación. John, how you doing? Hey, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Are we all right? Let's jump right into this because we got we, uh, we 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 got questions, we got time. Uh, our first question: uh, We've seen on ISC recently that work has begun on ship-to-ship -ship docking, ship-to-station uh, ship docking. Uh, can you give us an update on both? Eh, hemos visto en los Inside Star Citizen que hay eh, novedades acerca de el docking. Eh, Nos pueden dar novedades tanto del docking de nave a nave como de nave a estación. Yep, I sure can. Um, we sort of think of them in three different ways, although the two are sort of under the same umbrella of ship to ship docking. So, with ship to ship docking, uh, there's two aspects we're looking at. So, there's the direct hard attachment, which the prime example is the constellation of Merlin. And okay. then there's ship to ship docking as a general, which is just any ship with a docking port connecting to another one. So, first up, we're doing. Me dice que hemos pensado que hay dos tipos diferentes, que sería eh, la forma, por ejemplo, que lo hace una Merlin con con una constellation o la forma en la que lo hace, pues, una una nave con otra nave, como podría ser, pues, una Kulas Blue con con una eh, Carrack, por ejemplo. In the Connie and Merlin, uh, hard docking. Uh, that is well underway. We've got to the point where the vehicle. Uh, is attached to each other and you can get in and out uh, and we're now at the point of just sort of dealing with all the quirks of having two vehicles physically joined together intentionally uh, which has thrown up some weird physics problems that we're just working through okay. how does that um, how does that docking work does, does the pilot have to pilot it in is there some kind of ar thing they've got to follow is it uh, completely automatic pilot it's it's not completely automatic so you you communicate to the the target ship Uh, and they accept your request to dock um, because if there if there was no sort of permission system, you could have anybody just <laughs> randomly trying to uh, dock with you. Uh, but once all that's all sorted out, uh, you get a docking UI, um, which gives you uh, an idea of how far off on each axis and roll uh, you are. You, you line up all the symbols, you're in the right place, and then the very last few meters, it takes over and automatically guides you in. So you have to do. Ah, dice que para le están preguntando de cómo sería el tema de, de meter la Merlin en la Coni y dice que de entrada pues vamos a tener que pedir permiso porque si no cualquiera podría entrar no entonces cuando la nave a la que tú quieres ir te da permiso eh, no será completamente automático el proceso sino que tendrás una serie de, de instrumentación que te va guiando hacia hacia el lugar y eh, cuando esté a escasos metros de, de, del, del acoplamiento pues en ese momento pues se pasará a modo automático sí. Sort of 99% of the, the flying into it, and that's the very last bit where we have to ensure that you are orientated a, right. a very specific way to get. Like you think about the Merlin, there is a baked animation sequence to get out the ship. So if you are five centimeters off to the left, you could end up getting out yeah. through the constellation out the other side. So we have to ensure you're a very specific position. So that's why there's automatic there. Claro, dice que el 99% del vuelo será manual, pero que ese porcentaje último pues tendrá que ser automático porque a la hora de realizar la acción eh, se tiene que asegurar que la nave está en una posición concreta eh, porque hay unas mecánicas de anclaje y demás, etcétera, Y para que no salgas volando por ahí por unos por unos pocos centímetros, que por eso han decidido hacer esa última parte eh, automática. Okay. Um, I'll come back to the bit of ship to ship docking. Uh, ship to station docking is also well underway. We've got a, a fairly functional prototype at this point. Uh, we're just working out some of the last technical hurdles for that before we enter full production on that. So that's you taking your large ships and docking at any of the orbital stations or other places that have these large extended docking tubes that I think you saw in ISC. Um, 
so that's that's the order of battle there really we're doing the constellation merlin docking first then we're doing ship to station docking and then at some point after that we'll we'll do the ship to ship Ahí dice que también el, el docking de, de estación a naves, que, que parece que va, que va bien la cosa, que están yendo en la dirección adecuada y que bueno que podremos eh, eh, anclar eh, pues todo tipo de, de naves que tengan el anclaje disponible a las estaciones y que el orden de batalla para digamos eh, de, para conseguir o para lograr los, los docking, pues primero que sería el, el de la Conela Merlin, después se pondrían con el nave a estación y finalmente eh, nave a nave. Um, purely because there's there's less of a need for that right now. Um, the Constellation Merlin thing solves some tech problems for ship to station docking. Ship to station docking is needed for ships that are coming. Uh, ship to ship is a sort of nice to have that we will do, but it's not as important as those other two. Gotcha. Bueno, dice que parece ser que está hecho así por una cuestión de prioridad, que que en principio eh, eh, la importancia de consideran importante el hecho de que la Merlin funcione. Eh, con el anclaje de la de, de la Constellation y que luego por las naves que están por llegar eh, también, o sea, las naves que están por llegar pues la serie Hull, en cojones pues consideran que también es importante tener el, el tema del, del anclaje a estaciones, que todavía el anclaje a naves que no, no lo consideran tan importante right. el anclaje de nave a nave ¿no? que no lo consideran tan importante, el acoplamiento um... Let's move on to the next question then. Uh, a lot of people asking about the current status of physicalized things like physicalized armor, um, armor penetration, of course, uh, and then updated SDF shields. So the, the the tech features that surround vehicles. Uh, what can you tell us? ¿Qué nos puedes decir uh, acerca de la armadura, la penetración de armadura eh, con respecto a las naves y también el el signo de Stanfield, que es eh, bueno, el, el campo ese que envuelve, la tecnología esa que envuelve para los escudos, que también eh, se ha utilizado en, en las entradas en atmósfera para que la atmósfera se adapte a la entrada en atmósfera se adapte la, al movimiento de las naves y demás. ¿no? Yep, they, all those three things are in active production at the moment. Um, they're not just for vehicles, uh, especially the, the physicalized armor and penetration, that's also going to be applicable to, to actors and the FPS game. Están comentando de que esas tres cosas están ahora mismo en, en producción, trabajándose en ellas, y que la penetración de armadura no solo, no solo va a ser para naves, sino también para personajes. So again, uh, we've got to a point where we're working on the, the initial parameters and tuning them in, making sure they're, they're working as we expect um, before we start really putting all hands on it. Uh, y de que están ya <coughs> empezando, o sea, que ya tienen los, los parámetros básicos. Están poniendo los parámetros básicos eh, para poder, eh, pero antes tienen que asegurarse de que esos parámetros pues, sean los adecuados para, para poder pues, seguir empujando en esa dirección y, y bueno, pues, que haga lo que, lo que realmente quieren que hagan. ¿no? Chris has been involved in it, but the physics guys are doing the groundwork. The vehicle and the actor teams are working together to go, right, we need all these parameters. Please, please make them, the, the physics guys, give us a, a build back and go, it's, sure that that sort of works this bit doesn't work we need some more tuning here so we're, we're definitely working on it right now um how far through that process we are i i it's hard to say until we get something that works across the system um yeah. Yeah, that's it. Me dice que a la hora de decidir o sea a la hora de comentar eh, cuán lejos han llegado en el en el sistema de penetración de armadura y demás hablando con o sea en, entre varios equipos no que es es difícil de decir hasta que lo tengamos implementado en en el sistema So it sounds like you're you're working on the, the the prototype, the tech itself, as opposed to actively converting all the other ships. You know, yeah, we ship to this. Okay, we have our internal like milestones for this, so it would be foolish to work on the tech alongside converting all the ships to it, because um, there's just so many ships. So we want to get a very small set of ships working first with it all, get them all playing nicely against each other. Uh, understand the tools we have to balance this now because it, it moves away completely from weapon does 100 damage ship has a thousand health right. 10 shots equals death um whilst we have a lot of that all on paper paper doesn't necessarily translate to fun gameplay 
once it's all implemented. So, Me está diciendo de que a la hora de probar esta, bueno, discordando diciendo que bueno que lo que están haciendo es el prototipo, el prototipo para, para luego eh, ver si ese prototipo se puede implementar en otras naves y dice eh, Juan Tribulación que sería estúpido el tratar de poner todo esto en todas las naves ya, sino que solo van a tener al principio unas pocas naves con, con este sistema para, para ver qué tipo de, de balanceo tienen que hacer en un principio. Y alejarse del de tema de 10 tiros, eh, necesita esta nave para ser matada o cosas así. Alejarse de ese tipo de mecánicas y también de tener en cuenta que una cosa es cómo se ve sobre el papel y otra cosa cómo se ve eh, cuando se juega. O sea que todavía pues ese es el motivo de ponerlo solo en unas pocas naves al principio, ¿no? para ver cómo, cómo se va resolviendo. Yeah, all the all the teams are working on the fistalized armor and the armor penetration. Uh, so penetration will be a thing, over penetration will be a thing. Um... SDF shields was the last thing there, I think. Uh, so in recent builds, all ships have uh, SDFs generated for their what will be their shield bubbles. Uh, the build process is now spitting them out for us. Um, you will have seen the atmospheric reentry effect in 3.10 uses that uh, as the basis. So 3.10 was a sort of precursor for rolling it out on a, a slightly simpler problem to solve which is atmospheric entry effects sort of reacting to whatever angle your ship is right. shields takes that to the next level so core tech wise it's pretty much there uh and it's really now working with the vfx team and the vfx engineering team to to make the shields look good because we, we can't use any of the existing shield effects work we have to recreate that from scratch and that that brings up a lot of uh not tech but sort of visual gameplay how do we make it look bueno, están comentando un poco de que eh, pues el equipo está trabajando en penetración de armadura y, eh, y bueno pues en los comportamientos de la armadura en general y que después de ese paso eh, pues el siguiente paso será el, el trabajar con los escudos en el, en el signo de distancia fiel, si que ahora mismo eh, esa tecnología, lo que es la base, el núcleo de, de esa tecnología que ya está implementada en el juego, en la 3.10, con esas entradas en atmósfera que vemos, que es el signo de distancia fiel, eh, quien provoca ese tipo de efectos y demás. Y que eh, pues falta que el, efectivamente el equipo de efectos visuales haga los, los diseños, los visuales, para, para ver cómo se representan los, eh, pues esos daños, esos escudos y que la, los efectos visuales que hay ahora que no que son que son basura que no sirven para nada y que tendrán que ser o sea tendrán que hacer unos nuevos para para el signo de fiel de los escudos good at short range and far range um, yeah. without blinding players claro y además eh, dice que tienen que estar seguros de que se vea tanto eh, a distancias lejanas o a distancias cercanas sin el problema de que cieguen a los jugadores and of course after you make it look good then making it performative like yes. it's finding that balance between you know you can make it look you know, amazing and like if you only had one ship to blow up you were fine but in when it comes to giant melees of multiple ships you need something that can scale you know scale and be performative and stuff so uh, a lot of work to be done there i would imagine claro me está haciendo descolando que también hay que fijarse que puede puede ser algo que sea impresionante y tal pero tienes que tener algo también que sea capaz de escalar pues si hay eh, pues una pues hostias en masa pues que tienen que también tener cuidado con el rendimiento. Yeah, certainly the the initial stuff we've seen of the SDF shields internally looks very promising in terms of just how it looks and how it behaves because one of the big things is when you lose a wing the SDF adapts to losing that you don't have this weird bubble floating out. Uh, so it's going to be a really nice change. And uh, we Me dice que eh, una de las cosas interesantes que hay ahora es es que también cuando pierdes un ala el signal distance field se adaptará a que has perdido ese ala y en vez de ver un, una burbuja vacía y que dice que es uno de los cambios más, más chulos que, que hay, ¿no? We will of course be showing that to the community just as soon as we get closer to the more performative model. It's one of those things where you, we, we, you show it now and it could lead to inappropriate expectations about what's going to actually be there, so. Que está haciendo discolando que lo enseñarán en el punto adecuado que demostrar ese tipo de tecnología ahora podría eh, indicar una dirección que no que no es la que la que se espera o crear falsas expectativas ¿no? de lo que de lo que realmente se trata de hacer. Um, all right, uh, so that's exciting though. The physical armor, armor penetration, SDF stuff, all in active development now. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, 
at times throughout Star Citizen's development, we've heard about how each ship manufacturer would have its own HUD. Um, there'd be an Aegis HUD or an Anvil HUD or something like that. Um, we have we used to have some version of that, and then it kind of went away for an homogenization. Uh, is that coming back? Yep, that's coming back. Uh, in fact, we're we're actively working. I keep saying actively working, but it's true. Um, <laughs> it's it's true. Uh, the the Aegis ships, uh, or specifically the Gladius, for squadron reasons, is going to be getting a, a completely fresh HUD overall. Uh, and then we have, I think we've also worked on an RSI styling. Uh, so all the manufacturers will be getting uh, thematically he themed HUDs for their ships rather than it just being the same HUD. Bueno, están comentando de que a la hora de los de los HUDs eh, que vemos ahora, pues que todas las, eh, pues que cada marca va a tener su, su temática y está preguntando a si eso sigue en pie y que sí, que están trabajando activamente en ello. Eh, la primera nave en la que se va, vamos a ver el cambio va a ser de la marca de Aegis, bueno, pues es la, la Gladius eh, por tema de Escuadrón 42 que va a tener eh, un retrabajo en el, en el HUD, en, los, o sea, en el visor. Eh, para que se adapte a lo que es la, la marca de AX, eh, luego pasarán a RSI, parece que comenta, y bueno, pues eh, todas las marcas en general tendrán sus peculiaridades. Recolored, um, and that will apply to the MFDs as well. So the, the core functionality of the MFDs, when they're reworked, will be the same, uh, but they'll just have a visual styling over it to make it feel like this is a Drake MFD versus an Aegis MFD. Claro, luego las, las MFD, las, los paneles de las naves, pues que dice que la funcionalidad, o sea, la función básica, o sea, cómo funcionan las cosas, estará ahí para todas, lo, lo mismo, pero la forma en la que se percibe eso visualmente, pues será distinto, en plan de que cuando te montas una nave, pues serás eh, capaz de identificar por los paneles, pues esta es una nave de Drake o esta es una nave de RSI. And this, I guess, I would imagine this is part of why uh, the ship had, has been being converted into building blocks in recent yes. patches. Uh, people have seen aspects of it being converted over, and it looks like what they had before, but yep. it's being converted so that they can be modular, so that we can plug them into the RSI style, the Aegis style, the, the uh, you know every, every other manufacturer style. Yeah, pretty much. It's it's uh, it looks exactly the same as it did, but it is in fact all new, uh, and now we have the ability to say style it by just applying one style sheet much like uh, web css you can change the theme with a very simple change which you can't do with flash you just have to remake the entire asset and then you están comentando algo que ya sabíamos que en general pues eh, aunque parezca que tenemos un un hood eh, parecido a lo que ya teníamos anteriormente creo que estábamos en la en la pista si no me acuerdo mal pero bueno que en realidad que ahora todo está hecho en building blocks y que, y que pues eso es el gran cambio, ¿no? que el, el building blocks eh, tiene un, una facilidad mucho mayor para personalizar eh, y para poner eh, pues diferentes temáticas a, a ese tipo de, de información, eh, no como en el flash que tendrían que hacerlo todo desde cero. ¿no? You've got two things to update every time you want to add or change something. Uh, so this new uh, Aegis uh, style, is it going to be different than we've seen before? Uh, It's going to be very different to what's in game and what people have seen. Cool. Well, we'll Dice que el, el, la temática, o sea, el de, de, de Aegis, que va a ser muy distinto de lo que ahora mismo tenemos en, en el juego. We'll, 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 we'll uh, hang tight until we can show folks what it looks like. Um, another big popular question when it comes to vehicles, uh, or vehicle tech that folks have been waiting for, the ability to spawn smaller vehicles inside larger vehicles uh whether that's the whether that's the pisces inside the carrick or the or a rover ursa rover inside a constellation uh any we've been on a good tra trail so far all these things in active development is this an active development uh it's it's sort of semi-active <laughs> uh we, we did some internal tests bueno, eh, en definitiva se le está preguntando la, la, la posibilidad de poder exponer naves ya con otras naves dentro es decir cuando vayas a langara cuando vayamos a por olis a cualquier lado llamar la nave que la podamos meter pues una carga ya con su pixis y con su o sea, rover o una constellation con su rover y le está preguntando discolando si esto está en, también en desarrollo activo y dice que está en semi-activo Uh, we we got a we got it working. Um, it's important to differentiate some of those things from like Connie and Merlin docking. That's that's almost like an entirely different thing. Right. Um, anything that is always going to be in a repeatable position every time you spawn the ship or customize the ship, like the Merlin and the Connie, uh, will work. Um, things where you can change it out between multiple ships. Uh, we're we're looking at this. 
ultimately it still creates item ports that ships are attached to but it does them dynamically um and for various technical reasons we're sort of waiting for iCache to be more complete on this certain okay. certain other areas and then we'll pick that up because bueno está está comentando en general que para naves como tipo la Merlin que siempre están en la misma posición exactamente que sería fácil hacer esto pero que es más complicado eh, que requiere que el iCache esté más maduro para eh, poder poner cosas que realmente se pueden mover de, de posición, pues al final pues una PC se puede, no siempre tiene por qué estar exactamente en la misma posición, ¿no? o, o un rover también pasa lo mismo. If we try and shoehorn it in now, it will just be throwaway code that iCache does out the box for it. That, may, that, may, that makes sense. That makes sense. We we we've run into that situation in a number of features. So so all right. So that one's not in active development like the other things, just waiting on other dependencies. Yes. All right. So lastly, our last ship feature related question. Vale, que está, o sea, que definitivamente que eso está esperando por el que cash eh, se madure un poco. O sea, que está de pendiente de, o sea, el que podamos poner nave con otra nave dentro que todavía. Suntem. Question has to do with the whole C. Uh, we know that work was paused on it some time ago because it was rated, uh, waiting for other ship-related tech like the expandable, collapsible physics grids. Um, I look at the ship-to-station docking and I, I see similarities there. Uh, are we getting closer to making this thing a reality? Uh, we are. Um, like you say, the ship-to-station docking uh, required uh, animated. Bueno, el tema eso de, de poder expandir movidas y demás, eh, que la Julce, ¿qué pasa con ella? Porque hemos visto con el Inside Star Cities en que el docking pues estaba, estaba el asunto interesante y cómo está, cómo está la movida. Está interesante la cosa y dice sí, sí lo está, ¿no? El, con tripulación. ¿no? And multiple physics grids, which is what the whole seed requires. Uh, so we now have those. Uh, so that's one thing ticked off the list of whole sea dependencies. Uh, we still have a few more that we need to, to solve before we can release the ship, but we are uh, able to actually progress internally now a bit more with it. Okay. Um, so we need the ability for rooms to scale, like uh, physics areas, because now you can have gravity in that central spine, uh, but there'll be no air. So it's okay. sort of equally as problematic for release. Okay. Um, but now they have to make sure that the system of habitations can expand and contract for the issue of oxygen. Eh, para que, bueno, pues en el medio de la nave sí que habrá gravedad y demás, pero no, no habrá aire eh, para el tema de la Hull C. O sea, quedaría eso, ¿no? Para la Hull C. Y eso también ayuda a todos los diseñadores de niveles y los vehículos de diseñadores porque queremos unificar la manera en que los rumos y las formas son hechas en el engine. Um, at the moment, they're all sort of individual shapes, so a designer has to go in and mark up a room for the air, an audio designer has to go in and mark up a room for the audio volume. Uh, art have to go in and mark up a room for vis areas and portals to stop light coming in. So you want to all put them into one single feature that can support scaling, and then bam, that's the the whole C part. Me dice que lo, la otra parte sería pues el tema de audio, el tema de luces y demás que se pueda eh, poner eh, cuando eso se pueda poner en una característica, agrupar digamos esas propiedades de, de audio por así decirlo, y pues ahí será escalable también, eh, o sea. De... <risa> Pues en ese momento es donde cuando consigan eso, eh, pues también se podrá eh, pues hacer la Julce. O sea, faltan esas dos cosas, ¿no? Eh, parece ser. Uh, solved. Um, the two other bits needed are a way to nicely trigger state machines on vehicles. So we sort of fudge it together at the moment by tying state changes into landing gear deployments. Uh, we need to split that out. Um, that's scheduled for uh, one of the vehicle teams. State changes into landing gear deployments. Uh, we need to split that out. Um, that's scheduled for uh, one of the vehicle teams. Um, and then the last one is really the cargo system. It obviously carries thousands of units of cargo, and we only supply cargo in one SEU. Vale, además, eh, luego está diciendo de que tienen que trabajar. Además, hay dos cosas más, dice, que sería el tema de eh, definir los diferentes, eh, los diferentes estados de, del sistema de aterrizaje. Y eh, otro, otro, otra cuestión sería también la, la carga, porque la Hulce lleva una cantidad de carga bestial. Boxes at the moment, uh, and that system needs to support not doing that. It needs to go, right? You've bought 4,000 units of uh, Laronite, and here's 100 big boxes of it, or, right. um, because it will just cripple server performance. Uh, we, we've seen what happens when people go wild with Picos. Uh, this would be a whole lot of... Lot worse than that. 
Vale, dice que, que hemos visto cuando la gente pilla muchos picos que el rendimiento que ha implicado que no podemos tener eh, mil cajas ahí, eh, o sea, cuatro mil cajas y demás eh, separadas, que tiene que haber la tecnología también para que unifique ese tipo de, de cajas en las naves, porque si no, petaría todo. And it's one of those things where the upcoming uh, cargo decks in 311, uh, while not the functionality it's in 311, but uh, the cargo decks themselves are a platform for additional features and work, and those will tie into uh, being able to offload Uh, things like the whole sea and, and yeah, maybe they, even load them up to begin with. So, yeah, they're, yeah, they're the perfectly designed places for that because you don't want to take your whole sea. Well, you can't land with the cargo out, so there's very little point taking it down to the surface to, right. to land, but right. you will need to drop these off at orbital stations. Además, las estaciones pues, servirá, servirán también de práctica para, eh, para poder probar todas estas características las estaciones de carga, porque además dice, bueno, es que claro, es que no puedes tocar el suelo cuando tienes una Hulce cargada, así que tendrás que hacerlo en estaciones, dice Juan Tripulación. Things like the physicalized armor and the, uh, the armor penetration and the SDF shields and the two different versions of, of ship docking, you know, all in active development. You know, some, some, we hear so often about you know dependencies and this has to wait for this, but to know that these things are actually in active motion now. Uh, the, the, the HUD styling for Aegis, Uh, another big thing, uh, it's, it's, it's another big part of making these ships. Que ha estado hablando así un poco haciendo un resumen de, de lo dicho, ¿no? De que, bueno, que es interesante, o sea, es emocionante ver cómo, cómo está, pues, el, el tema de la producción de, de armadura, el signal distance fields, eh, el, el tema del HUD de, de las naves, ver que eso está en, en desarrollo activo, eh, que no es dependiente de, de, de otras cosas. Ships feel different and unique and bespoke. Um, Uh, lots of exciting stuff. Um, we we we, uh, we blaze through this. We got a little time left in what we're allowed, so I'm I'm gonna veer a little bit. Point one of my own in there. It's not a ship feature related thing, but it's a ship thing. My dad, when he when when he pledged for Star Citizen, the first ship that brought him in was the, the was the, was the Redeemer. I mean that was the, that was that was his first pledge. Uh, it brought him. In. Voy a hacer aquí una pregunta que esta viene de mí y tiene que ver con mi padre. <risa> mi padre, la primera pregunta que... O sea, la primera pledge store, o sea, la primera pledge store, o sea, la primera compra de nave que hizo en Star Citizen fue la Redeemer. <risa> Entonces, ¿qué cojones pasa? Star Citizen, um, we've talked about how it was going to be reconcepted, uh, re-envisioned, re you know, for, for a couple of reasons. It's, the, it's been quiet. Has there been any mm -hmm. movement on this? Ha, se, ha estado callado el tema. ¿Hay algún movimiento en la Redeemer? Yeah, so we we talked about this a uh, while back about moving it into a sort of a full gunship role, uh, and that that has happened. Uh, we had a little hollow viewer of it at the uh, Fleet Week, mm -hmm. Invictus Launch Week. Uh. Bueno, sí, hemos pensado moverlo a full cañonera, que se lo sabíamos. Hemos añadido un holograma en la Fleet Week. Event. So if you uh, Eagle-eyed, you will have spotted the Redeemer was there in the Hollow Viewer, and it wasn't quite looking the same as it does in the hangars or it does right. in the original concept. So we have done some work on it, and um, I can maybe share a few pictures of it. Oh, 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 oh. Hemos hecho algún trabajo en ella y quizás pueda compartir algunas fotos de la Redeemer. No sé si darle. No sé si darle, chavales. Yo creo que no. Hasta aquí el directo de hoy, chavales. Nos piramos. <risa> Fuera de la party. A ver, a ver. Before this gets okay. So yeah, uh, a, a gunship needs lots of guns. So um, I un can't gunship quite... necesita muchas armas, así que. Remember off the top of my head the the sizing of these, um, but the the exterior of the Redeemer has pretty much been entirely reworked but keeping it in the same style as it was. Vale, el exterior de la Redeemer ha sido prácticamente retrabajado, pero eh, conservando el estilo de la nave. We were on the fence about do we just move it to a different manufacturer because it looks so different to Aegis. Mm -hmm. um, but in the end we decided to keep it Aegis, we'll keep the nutcracker wings, but we'll just do a little massaging of all the shapes here to bring it more into the Aegis style so the nose has changed. Vale, dice que al final se va a conservar como Aegis, pero como el estilo no era muy a X, lo que han decidido es como masajear un poco la nave. Ha habido cambios en el morro. En los diseños de las torretas. Vale, 
still got the wheels on the bottom. We, we toyed around with skids, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep it to the original concept. You can see here, there's there's a lot more Aegis. Right, right. Here. I'm trying to do my best Paul Jones uh, <laughs> impersonation. Um, I think the tail's slightly changed as well. La cola también ha cambiado un poquito, como estamos viendo, sigue teniendo las ruedas en la parte de abajo, está comentando. Um, so it has a manned turret on the top, manned turret on the bottom, that are... Dos, o sea, una, una torreta de manual de arriba, otra en la parte de abajo. Entirely accessible from within the ship, you don't need to go on a little ghost train ride out into... A ver, a ver, a ver, a ver. No, ¿qué he hecho? <laughs> la he liado. <laughs> la acabo de formar, chavales. <laughs> la acabo de formar. Vamos a ver. I need to go on a little ghost train ride. Ahora. <laughs> a ver. Está por aquí. Um, so it has a manned turret on the top, manned turret on the bottom that are entirely accessible from within the ship. You don't need to go on a little ghost train ride out into. Ah, es que si hay una cosa que dice aquí que no me entero, coño. Vamos a ver. Uh, impersonation. <laughs> um, I think the tail is slightly changed as well. Um, so it has a manned turret on the top, manned turret on the bottom that are entirely accessible from within the ship. You don't need to go on a little ghost train ride out into outer space to get to the turrets anymore. Me dice que el, el, o sea, que el acceso será más fácil, que no hay que hacer como, no hay que acceder como esa cosa de, 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 de acoplamiento extraño que había antes en la, en la Redeemer, que directamente accederás desde el interior de la nave la torreta de abajo. Um, still has the ramp on the back. Uh, Todavía sigue teniendo la, la so rampa en la parte de atrás. No, no, es it's, just... it's, it's still the Redeemer that people. You would still look at this and go, this is the Redeemer. It's not a complete reimagining of it. So we try to keep it faithful to the original uh, concept, but just bring it up to modern standards. Um, I don't have any of the interiors here to show, but that is. That's had much more of a upgrade from uh, what was there. Uh, the, the, the drop seats are gone, they've been replaced with space to sort of walk around the ship uh if people have got into the one in the hangar still they'll know it's it's quite compact to move around in there so we've uh enlarged it um got access to components you've got access to all the turrets you can no, está diciendo que por aquí han quitado lo que sería la, los asientos y que ahora habrá eh, espacio para moverte alrededor en plan revisar componentes y demás freely move around without it being cavernous hmm. but yeah you can see there's a There's a lot of turrets. There's two at the front. One of those is pilot control. There's the manned one behind it. There's a manned one on top. Uh, there's the one on the tail as well. So yeah, this is really designed for, for hovering around. These nutcrackers will rotate for VTOL. Uh, so you can really go full AC-130 style and engage in ground combat. Nice. Que además tendrá VTOL, lo que le permitirá poder entablar combate en tierra, la verdad es que la forma que le han dejado y los cambios y tal, hay que reconocer que está bastante más chula de lo que era el concepto original. Tiene ciertos, o sea, en los, el, el masaje ese que le han dado, agüita. Esto está siendo construido ahora mismo por el, por el vehículo de producción, o sea, por el equipo de producción de vehículos, o sea, ahora mismo está haciéndose esta nave. Uh, concept house, just like any other ship, um, we, we, for, for ones that have been previously available and are going to go back into production, we, we treat them as a new ship, we take them through the entire concept pipeline um, to just vet that everything is there that it needs to be there before artists put pen to paper. Okay. Well, um, that's that's enough of your surprise treats. All right. Well, thank you so much, John. The Redeemer looks like it's in good hands. Uh, I think folks will be really happy to have to see that it's uh, made some progress here. Uh, of course, when it does go into active production, uh, we will let the community know and keep an eye on the public roadmap for when you can expect it uh, in any live release. So, John, I'll let you go. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. That's been good. <sighs> All right, that about does it for this episode of Calling All Devs. A special thanks to John Crew for taking time to be here on the show with us for this special Talk and Ship episode. Remember, you can submit your questions for consideration on each episode up in the thread up on Spectrum. So for Calling All Devs, I'm Jared Huckabee. Until next time, take care. 
Bueno, que si queremos ver más actualizaciones de la Redeemer, podremos revisar eh, futuras actualizaciones del roadmap. Y, y listo. Y hombre, la verdad es que está muy bien. Está muy bien y me voy a ir... Me voy a, a echar una partida, chavales, mientras hablamos del tema. Ahora nos vemos.